Important Instructions To use the MAT-1500 Pro Tuner correctly and safely, before use, please carefully and thoroughly refer to the Tuner Operation Manual and this video. In particular, to the content related to the connection of tuner control cables, because improper operation causes serious damage to the tuner. The special mode of the MAT-1500 Pro Tuner isn't suitable for all ICOM transmitters. Let's have a look at the back panel of the transmitter. If your transmitter has a socket marked at Tuner, it basically can adopt the special mode of the tuner. If your transmitter doesn't have a socket, it can only adopt the general mode of the tuner. Now let's take the ICOM IC7300 transmitter as an example to show how to use the MAT1500 Pro Tuner. First, let's see how the cable is connected. Before pulling out and inserting any control cable, please pay attention. You must turn off the transmitter, otherwise you may damage your transmitter and tuner. Insert the white plug of the MATCI control cable into the tuner socket of the transmitter. Pay attention to the direction of the plug. Insert the black plug at the other end into the ICOM socket of the tuner. Pay attention to its direction too. Insert and pull out it carefully to avoid the damage to the contact pins. The control cable has been connected. Next, connect the PPT control cable. Use one of the two RCA control cables provided for the tuner to connect the PPT out socket of the tuner and the PPT in of the amplifier, here marked as key in. Sometimes PPT in socket is marked as key in. Use another cable to connect the socket PPT in of the tuner, the one below with the send socket of the transmitter. This is the socket send of the transmitter and it outputs the PPT instruction. Connect them. The PPT instruction passes the tuner first and then enters the amplifier. In this way, the tuner can control the transmission of the PPT instruction between the transmitter and the amplifier, especially if you use the socket ACC of the transmitter. To automatically control the linear amplifier, you must disconnect the core pin for transmitting the PPT instruction and the control cable connecting the socket with the amplifier. So the tuner can control the transmission of the PPT instruction from the transmitter to the amplifier. If the instruction isn't disconnected, the amplifier will still amplify the RF signal when the transmitter starts tuning, thus damaging the tuner. Connect the coaxial cable. First, Connect the cable of the antenna with the socket of the tuner, antenna 1, or antenna 2. Here, we use the socket, antenna 1. You must tighten the plug to ensure good electric conduction. Then, use another coaxial cable to connect the socket RFN of the tuner with the output of the SWR meter, namely antenna. Use another RF cable to connect the input of the SWR meter with the output of the amplifier that we choose the socket, antenna 1. Finally, connect the input of the amplifier with the output of the transmitter. Now we've completed the connection of RF cables. We used a SWR meter. If you don't use a SWR meter, you can directly connect the input of the tuner and the output of the amplifier. This is an ICOM IC7300 transmitter. Today we use this machine to show how to operate the MAT1500 Pro Tuner in the special mode of ICOM. Turn on the transmitter. The tuner and the transmitter start synchronously. As the ICOM transmitter is connected now, the ICOM indicator lamp of the tuner is on. The tuner automatically set to the special mode of ICOM. Look at the button and the indicator lamp on the right. The power supply lamp is on. The tuner is now in ICOM special mode. 
The power button doesn't work, but only serves as a power supply lamp. Antenna 1 is on, which means that the currently selected antenna is Antenna 1. If you want to select the Antenna 2, you can directly press Antenna 2. We switch back to the Antenna 1. Tune is off, which means that the tuner is bypass. In the special mode, the Tune button doesn't work, but only serves as online or bypass lamps. We use the Tune button of the transmitter to change the online or offline states of the tuner. Now the brand of transmitter is 80 meters. Let's check the current SWR of the antenna when there is no tuner. For safety, I set the amplifier to standby. Now it is standby. Set the output power level of the transmitter to 5 watts. Let's transmit to see the SWR. All. We can see now the SWR is very high. Then we switch the brand of 40 meters. All. The SWR is also very high. In other words, the antenna we use now has a very high SWR when the brands are 80 meters or 40 meters. Let's switch back to the brand of 80 meters. We set the amplifier to the online state, namely the operate state. The PTT instructions transmitted by the transmitter to the amplifier decides when the amplifier conducts amplification. We have already used the tuner to control the transmission of the PTT instructions between the transmitter and the amplifier, so the amplifier doesn't conduct amplification during tuning. Now let's start a tuning cycle. We can start a tuning cycle by pressing and holding the Tune button for more than one second. Now let's have a try. Now it is in tuning. Well, the tuning is finished soon. Now we can see that the Tune lamp of the tuner is on, which means the tuner is already online. At the time, the tuner has automatically resumed the transmission of the PTT instruction between the transmitter and the amplifier. When the transmitter works, the amplifier will work. We set the power level of the SWR meter to 300 watts. All. Now the maximum power output of the transmitter is 5 watts. After amplified by the amplifier, it has already exceeded 300 watts. However, the SWR is very low. Now we switch back to the brand of 40 meters and demonstrate it again. We start a tuning cycle. Well, the tuning is finished. The tune lamp of the tuner is on, which means the tuner has completed the tuning successfully and has been automatically set to the online state. Let's check the current SWR and the maximum output power. On. We can see the maximum output power has exceeded 200 watts. The SWR is also very ideal. Well, this is how to operate the MAT1500 Pro Tuner in the special mode. From the above demonstration, we can see that it is very easy to operate the MAT1500 Pro Tuner in the special mode. It can achieve full automatic operation. We can directly achieve the one-click operation by the Tune button of the transmitter, so it is very convenient. Here, I want to remind you that the ICOM transmitter is different from the Yasu transmitter. After the Yasu transmitter changes the frequency, the tuner can change synchronously and automatically, but the ICOM transmitter can't do that. The reason is that the tuner protocol of the ICOM transmitter doesn't include frequency information, and the tuner can't change automatically and correspondingly with the frequency of the transmitter. After we change the frequency, we need to start a tuning cycle, and then the tuner can automatically start a tuning cycle for matching. Moreover, you can set the PTT tune function of the transmitter to on. Then, when you press PTT for the first time after setting a new frequency, the transmitter can automatically start a tuning cycle. It is very convenient. Thank you for watching.